Hey, welcome back to Love Nesters. We are about to go to Elmer's Auto and Toy Museum in Fountain City, Wisconsin. We actually heard about this place from one of our subscribers. Terry from McGuanago, Wisconsin. Thank you so much, Terry, for the tip. This looks like it will be an amazing place. Elmer and his wife, Bernadette, amassed an amazing collection that they've opened up to the public. Over 100 classic cars. What? largest collection of pedal cars in the United States no at over 700 and then he went a little smaller and started collecting toy cars over 35,000 toys are on display in this museum did you say 35,000 yes I did and the amazing thing is the family has decided to shut down the museum and they will be selling off the collection Elmer wanted it to be enjoyed by other people and get it into the hands of others who would love it as much what? as he does so if you are seeing this video prior to September 12th of 2022, the link in the description will bring you to the auction site. And there's a 1972 Ford Pinto that I got my eye on. Hope no one bids against you, dear. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. This unique museum was created by the tireless efforts of one man and one very supportive wife, Elmer and Bernadette Dillman. Elmer ran six different car-related businesses in his lifetime. In 1992, he retired to focus on his passion, collecting the rare and unique. In 1994, the museum opened, and after Labor Day weekend of 2022, it will be closing its doors forever. This is the first in a two-part series where we will explore Elmer's auto and toy museum. We speak to his son to learn about this man with a passion for wheels, and one of his friends shares the stories behind some of these spectacular cars. Be sure and stick around to the end when we look at some of the most amazing vehicles in this collection. Welcome to Love Nesters. We are a Wisconsin couple trying to keep life interesting now that our kids have left the nest. Join us on adventures big and small as we look for the quirky and unique while having some fun along the way. Thanks for being here. Hey, welcome back to Love Nesters. We are with Ralph here at Elmer's Museum, Car Museum. Ralph was a great friend of Elmer, and he's got some great insight into Elmer's Museum here. I was the only one that ever called the volunteer, and he didn't know what to tell me, because nobody ever did that. Oh! So I, that was in the wintertime, he says, you come up, and I'll see what you can do. And I've been here just about every day since. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, so you uh, got to see this this uh, uh, actually grow grow amazingly and there's everything here anything with wheels anything with wheels for the most part yep you're gonna find here that's right well yep. thank you ralph so really I, appreciate you being i do all the lawn mowing up here uh it's eight hours start to finish and a lot of it i do twice a week oh my goodness so that alone keeps me going it's a show car it's got a lot of trophies in the back it's one of a kind Second one here come down to the station that Elmer has down or had downtown. The guy says, I've had it long enough. Uh, I want to give it up. Do you want it? So, of course, they made a deal and it ended up up here. Got the Roadrunners and the uh, Plymouth Satellites here. Quite a few different versions of them. Mm. Uh, some got the big motors in, some uh, are just your normal, exceptional car. Studebaker here, we got the Turismo Hawk. A lot of them have low mileage, as you can see here, 49,000 on it. There's another of the satellite Plymouth. Okay. Wow, this one's beautiful. The 52 Chevrolet, still in mint condition. Here we've got the Woody. Like I say, somebody forgot to uncrate it. <laughs> uh, still beautiful though. Not a lot of them made at that time. Produced in 47, 48, didn't make them very long. And you said a lot of them didn't survive because the wood was, was rotting on the them? The wood would rot on it, yes. And they just made them look terrible. Wow. Yeah. Wouldn't hold the stain. Well, this one sure is beautiful. Uh, not a lot of those around in that condition in 1934. You call it a straight eight, huh? Straight eight motor. Delivery car, Crosley, 1949 model, 
and that's been in storage since 1957. things in his collection that wasn't his favorite but they come with the territory <laughs> and as you can see it's well kept mm -hmm. all with the Chevrolet pickup truck here with a Hemi motor in which is a big motor for a pickup truck after 50 miles an hour you can't keep the wheels on the road another Mustang Chevrolet convertible uh, one-of-a-kind items How about a dune buggy? Run the sand dunes. Very pretty. Black with a red interior. Mm. How about an ampho car that goes right in the water? What? Yes. This can go in the water? Right in the water. It's got two impellers under the back. The water goes up to the door handle when you're sitting in the water. Not real fast in the water, not real fast on land. Oh my gosh. 6,500 miles on it. Made in Germany with an Oscar Healy motor in the back. That's so cool, back in 1964 they were yes. making that. And you have the life jackets along with it just in case. I like that. <laughs> just in case. How about a Volkswagen? You take them to college and you see how many kids you can get jammed into them. And in this one you can take the convertibles down and pile them in pretty deep. This one's beautiful. Here's a car, 1941 Chevrolet. This guy was made the same year I was born. So it looks good. You look know, good. I look good. It looks good. <laughs> yes. Well kept. Yep. Oh, wow. How about Auburn? Auburn. Auburn. Made in Auburn, Indiana. That is beautiful. When you have that car running, you do not hear it run. Really? It's a very quiet car. It's got the lowest one he's ever got is a uh, Corvette 1978 model with 5.4 miles on. Still wrapped up on the seats. Come with five pieces of luggage at the back seat, and they're still there. Hey, welcome back to Love Nesters. We are at Elmer's Auto and Toy Museum with Elmer's son, Les. Thank you so much for hosting us today. Yeah, thanks for coming here. This is so exciting because this is our last opportunity to see this entire collection because in a couple weeks, it's going to be auctioned off. Yeah, we have a large Mecham sale that's going to be happening on site right here. Oh my goodness, that is going to be fantastic. You're going to, you're going to get to see all of these vehicles are going to be leaving this property. How do you feel about that? I don't know about exciting. There's going to be definitely mixed emotions. I mean, we grew up with it here, and and these have been the family's cars. These are dad's cars, and dad's pedal cars, and motorcycles, and it's something that's going to be really hard. To, to see you leave. I mean, it's it's his wishes, but uh, he wanted things to go back out at the Black Museum yeah. after after the museum was uh, done running, and that's we're following his wishes. Wonderful. Well, and I, I have a question for you, Les. How many of these cars did you get to personally drive around? I probably drove maybe a dozen to twenty. I think my brother Rick probably drove every one of them. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I was busy driving a race car, so I wasn't around as much. And he, but he, he, he drove probably most motorcycles and scooters too. He, he spent a lot more time doing that. So, he, but we had fun with the, all of it. Out of this entire collection, what's your favorite car? Oh, I like the '66 Belvedere one Hemi. So '66 Belvedere. It's it's probably one of the ugliest cars in the collection. I mean, it's a plain Jane. Um, it was a one owner car. It's the, the guy went to a dealership and he walked in at Plymouth dealership and says, I want the cheapest car with the biggest engine I can get. And so they ordered him a Belvedere one with a bench seat, but it has a 426 Hemi and a four speed. So, and that is one I got to drive. That, that's a pretty fast car. That's a fun car. So you actually used to race as well? I actually still do. Oh, you still do? Yeah, oh my I'm, goodness. I'm one of the oldest guys. When I started, I was the youngest kid on the track, but I've been doing it uh, 43 years, something like that. I started in 1977 as oh. a short little teenager. Oh my goodness. My, my first race car is actually up here. It's, it's a white 98 car. It was zero when I had it. My brother Rick had it. As a oh, it's 98. parked out right by the parking lot. It's actually right up between the second and third chat up there. Oh, we'll have yeah. to take a look at that. Yeah, you have to check out the pedals and the seat. I was 5'2", 87 pounds when I started racing it. Oh my so it has pedal extensions and and boards in the seat to boost me up and yeah it was kind of a 
interesting situation. Well, thank you so much for hosting us. This is a spectacular place to be. Um, Les, best of luck to you and your family. Really appreciate it Thanks. today. Hope Thanks. you enjoy your stay. Yeah, thank you. Ford fire engine. This car is a 1950 Pontiac Star Chief. It has the original upholstery. So check out this license plate on a 1951 Bel Air Chevy. This is a 1958 Chevy Impala. This is a 1949 Oldsmobile. Apparently these cars have won several races. Look at the visor that comes out over the windshield. This is a 1962 Oldsmobile Starfire. It has 15,000 miles on it. Everything is original on this, and it is in amazing condition. This 1957 Chevy, absolutely beautiful interior. Nineteen sixty-three Studebaker Abante, fifty-four thousand original miles. Wow, a nineteen sixty-four Chevrolet Corvair, sixteen thousand miles. Wow. Hey, welcome back to Love Nesters. We are in Fountain City, Wisconsin, at Elmer's Auto and Toy Museum. This place is only open for a few more weekends. If you're seeing this video before mid-September, you should come on out. If not, enjoy the video. This is a once-in-a-lifetime collection. If you like wheels, any type of wheels, you're gonna love this place. Motorcycles, cars, snowmobiles, you, uh, mm -hmm. bicycles, you name it, and toys. We still have to. You haven't seen the toys. There's lots here. If you're enjoying this video, we'd sure appreciate it if you'd give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for being here. This is not a mock-up. It is an actual race car driven by Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 2004. It's a 1965 Pontiac Grand Prix. Only 38,000 miles on it. One previous owner. <laughs> 1975 Excalibur. Fun fact, this was actually built in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So this building is full of the more rare vehicles that are getting ready for auction. This car has a special story. This is the car that Elmer had his first date with Bernadette in. He traced the owners back and repurchased it in time for their 25th wedding anniversary. They drove it on their 25th anniversary and they got a chance to do it again on their 50th. 
What a beautiful story. It's a 1973 Chrysler Imperial, 26,000 miles. This car captured my eye, a 1972 Honda, two cylinder, only 29,000 miles. This is a 1956 Chevrolet Bel Air. She has 56,000 miles on it. Beautiful condition. This is a 1969 Camaro convertible. It was an Indy Pace car. Nineteen seventy one Dodge Challenger, only fifty eight thousand miles on it. A dame from Counting Cars, I think, would like the sixty six Pontiac Goat, twenty eight thousand original miles. Everything is original on this vehicle. This is a 1961 Ford. It's got a rare formal roof, lowered end. Beautiful interior. This is a 1933 Rolls Royce. The entire body is aluminum, so you never have to worry about rusting in Wisconsin. This is a 1934 Plymouth. Look at this it's beautiful leather on the running board. This is a 1910 Model T Ford Roadster. A seat in the rear. Hmm. This is a 1924 Pup Mobile. Wow, this has to be one of the older cars here. Look at that. This is a 1932 Ford. It actually had electric windows then. Look at the paint job on that. This is a 1918 Chevrolet touring car. Chevrolet Corvette, completely original. 1957 Chrysler. Nineteen sixty-two Chevy SS. Ooh, that's a nice car. This is sweet. So here is the official car of love, Nesters. The Ford Pinto, this is all we can afford. Hey, welcome back to Love Masters. We just got done with Elmer's Auto and Toy Museum. I just have to say, wow, wow, wow. If you thought the house on the rock had the a lot of stuff. It's a triple wow. It's a triple wow. I think he had more stuff than the guy at the house on the rock who collected. No. Oh, well, you don't think so? It's pretty close. I, it's pretty amazing. And what's incredible is there's bicycles, pedal cars, automobiles, motorcycles, snowmobiles, you toys. And all of it is going up for auction. All of it? All of it. And a special thank you to Terry. Terry, one of our subscribers, said you gotta go to Elmer's. We are so glad we got to see it because this museum is shutting down. 
special thanks to the family who opened it up to us and let us uh, told us the stories and told us the amazing things that um, their mom and dad did. Stick to it, Elmer's. Oh, oh, I pushed the wrong thing. The week of September 12th is the auction where everything that you saw, except for the Ford pickup truck, is. Welcome back to Love Nesters. We are about to go to Elmer's Auto and Toy Museum. Stick to it.